Well, welcome everybody to the Tesla Model 3 Owners Club podcast show. This is episode one for May 6, 2016. I'm your host, Trevor Page. I'm an EV enthusiast and creator of the uh, uh, Tesla Model 3 Owners Club forum. And this is my co-host, Ken Bacher. He's a... Uh, Go ahead, tell yeah, us. Yeah, I'm Kenneth Bacor. I'm also an EV enthusiast and a Tesla Model 3 reservationist. I'm very happy for that. So welcome to our first episode of our show. So what do you want to talk about, Ken? We've got lots to well, cover today. <laughs> really, the purpose of the show is to keep everybody informed about the Model 3, since we're, we're kind of crazy on that, uh, that car that was just released or announced by Tesla last month. So the purpose of the show is to keep everybody informed of updates, which happen pretty well t- a few times a day. Yeah, there's a saying. lot of stuff coming out of Tesla these days. Uh, yesterday they had their uh, uh, first quarter 2016 um, earnings call, and boy, we got a lot of tidbits out of that one. I think we'll cover that a little bit later in the podcast Absolutely uh, for people will. to find out. So yeah. I think the, 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 the purpose of this podcast was really to take uh, the uh, Model 3 Owners Club forum, really, yep. and, and just expand the reach a little bit and provide mm-hmm. a little bit more of a video, uh, kind of a podcast or an audio podcast, depending on how things go. Yeah. Um, I think the idea was really to try and, uh, because the Model 3 represents uh, kind of a watershed moment, I think, in a lot of ways. Absolutely. Um, yeah. In the EV market, as far as a, a, a compelling, and I think the key word there is compelling, um, uh, EV on the market that's affordable, say, compared to, say, a, like a Model S or a Model X. Yeah. Um, and really give everybody a sort of a, a focused um, um, venue or, or, or an area where people could really discuss the vehicle and what Tesla's all about mm-hmm. and really kind of get things moving in the EV space and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the, um, the overall purpose. And, of course, being both Canadian, I think it's yeah. important to throw a little bit of a Canadian spin on there as to what's happening in this country because, you know, the focus a lot of the times is what's happening in the U.S. and the rest of the world. So we want to throw a little bit in there. There's no maple Absolutely. syrup involved. But no, not yet. Maybe we'll bring some for the show. If it <laughs> you never out. know, right? But that's a great point because there are, there are some other podcasts out there. Uh, I'm not sure if there's video, but there's certainly audio. And there are EV shows out there. Sure. A lot of good ones. But nothing that really kind of focuses a bit more on the Canadian marketplace and, and the consumer in Canada and how it relates to us. Yeah, so absolutely. we wanted to bring that a little bit more uh, into the show. So this isn't just a show for Canadians, obviously. We're going to no. cover Model 3 worldwide for any announcements and things that happen throughout the, the, the next course of time. But we wanted to be able to add that element. Absolutely. Um, as you're seeing from your, your owner's forum, you know, you've got a lot of people that are hitting it from the States, but you've got a growing number of Canadians and people are in other Absolutely, places in the world. Yeah. yeah. The interest is, has been yeah. spiking. I've been watching the numbers and it's, uh, it's, it's massive. Yeah. And We're congratulations on that forum site. I love it. It's great. Oh, really good. Thanks. So, well, I'm, uh, I'm glad, uh, you know, I'm a computer engineer in my spare time. Yeah. Well, not my spare time. It's what I do for a living. The EV thing is in my spare time. Yeah. So for me, it was um, doing the forum because uh, a lot of people are saying, well, why would you do the forum so on and so forth? And I really felt that Model 3 uh, being a mass market car, I really wanted to offer kind of a, uh, a centralized location where people yeah. could focus just on this vehicle. I think it's very, very important. Um, being a mass market vehicle, uh, there's a lot of people that don't really know how what Tesla is all about. Where did right. they come from? What's the car all about? Exactly. So by... By providing a, um, uh, a focused area where we could discuss this vehicle and, of course, my other series of YouTube videos of educating people on mm-hmm. EVs in general as well as what's happening with Tesla, um, I think, you know, really gives them a, a, you know, kind of a focused area as, as, as a place to discuss this vehicle and trying to educate people a little bit more as to what's really going on. And this podcast Absolutely. is just an extension of that. Yeah, and that's why I was drawn to the forum and mm-hmm. I guess the purpose of the show Again, is because uh, I was relatively new to the EV marketplace, you know, really just kind of got wind of it when I started to see some of the rebate announcements here in Canada and specifically in Ontario. And that caught my eye and, and uh, looking into it. So, you know, I was very excited to jump on the Model 3 and, and get on the reservation list. And now that I've dug into it and found it yourself and, and there's a lot of other information out there, it is nice to have a bit more of a central source to go to because there's yeah. so much. Yeah, right. there's there's lots of stuff going out there. So the purpose really is to try and educate a lot more and, and, and get it mainstream because let's face it, an EV is just a car. It just happens to have a, a different drivetrain. Yeah, it. absolutely. So. Absolutely. All right. So what we're going to talk about today in our opening episode is really a quick recap of the Model 3 launch. I think everybody watching this has probably seen the the video and explored a lot of websites and content about that. But we'll bring you a little bit up to speed and some of the current status of the pre-orders, etc. 
We're going to talk about some uh, current model news over the last few days. As we discussed, there's so much coming out on a daily basis, it will probably be hard for us to cover it all, but we'll pick snippets that we think are relevant to people Absolutely. and talk about it. And then over time, we're going to bring in a little bit more on the EV uh, electric vehicle industry as a whole and bring in uh, some news regarding that as developments uh, happen. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully that'll be great for everybody. So sure. let's start about the Model 3 launch. That was quite the day. Oh, boy. It was something we'd, uh, uh, anybody who's followed Tesla for a long time had been looking forward to for many, many years. Um, Tesla, just so people understand, I, I don't think, does everybody know where the history of where, where Tesla basically started? Oh, maybe you can it? tell our viewers. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Blah, 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 blah. Go back 10 years. It, it, you know, <laughs> in a minute, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I tr I'll try and give a, sort yeah. of the Coles Notes yeah. uh, version. Uh, yeah. Tesla was started, a uh, partnership between uh, Mark Tarpening, uh, Ian Wright, and... Um, Oh, now this is going to throw me off. I can't remember the other... Oh, Martin Eberhardt. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and very shortly after that, J.B. Straubel, who's still with the company today. Right. Um, Elon gets all the focus in the company, but Correct. he was the first real big investor, and he came on a little bit later. Okay. Uh, so they started in 2003 with the plan of uh, building um, an electric car for the masses. But mm -hmm. based on the technology that was available at the time, it's just not feasible to get to, say, a thirty, a $35,000 car. Right. So their business plan was... Let's do like what they did in the cell phone industry is that new technology is always expensive. Remember Start at the top. Bricks, big boxes, cell phones. Yeah, yeah. Wall Street. Remember exactly. Wall Street? Yeah, the big it. brick phone. My wife had one of those phones. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the, the purpose really was to start at the top yeah. and then work their way down. Matter yeah. of fact, the very first blog post that, that Elon had put on the Tesla Motors um, website in 2006 was the secret master plan. And that's mm. obviously anybody who's watched the Model 3 um, introduction. Uh, basically yep. talked about that as well, yep. which was start, uh, start with a very low volume, uh, fairly high price high vehicle price. to prove mm -hmm. the technology and yep. change people's opinion. Yep. Use that money to fund, say, a, a, you know, a less expensive yeah. <laughs> family sedan type of thing. Still and again, on, on the luxury side. But exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, really push forward the fact that EVs can be a better car. Yes. And then use those funds to fund the mass market car, and that's where we're at right now with the with the Model 3. So that's really Absolutely. the three-step master yeah. plan. Yeah. So anybody who's been following Tesla has always been looking forward to the Model 3, the Model 3, the Model 3. It wasn't always known as a Model 3. Right. We can maybe talk about that later. But um, Another show. We'll yeah, maybe secret, another show. There's so much to talk about exactly. for sure. So that's where we're at right yeah. now is, 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 is the relatively affordable mass market vehicle. Yes. Um, it's made all the news all over the world, and I think really, uh, as Elon has explained, is that it really takes a compelling vehicle to get people's minds to change, mm -hmm. and that's certainly showed by the amount of pre-orders that they've that they wow received in their it was almost it's probably exceeding four hundred thousand now. It's definitely over four hundred thousand. The last numbers we had were mid-April, and they had hit four hundred thousand. So it's sure it's just I mean, unheard of. Talk, people talk about five hundred thousand, and then maybe another wave coming. You know, specifically oh, I would based suspect, on, yeah, on yesterday's. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I think the, the curve yeah. I think has slowed down a yeah. little bit right now, but yeah. I think. Um, Sometime next year, when production really starts and they do the second reveal, because yeah. this is the way they operate, uh, yeah. we'll probably see another spike. Of course, so Absolutely. it's all planned out. So. And those initial deliveries uh, were or are anticipated for late twenty seventeen. I think it's important to note, based on the first quarter um, uh, earnings call yesterday, yesterday. that the Which whole we'll production about, plan, yeah. based on the orders that they've got in now, has been essentially moved up about six months. Absolutely. Yeah. So now they're saying a volume deliveries by the end of 2017. Yeah. So, <laughs> Which is significant. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so you were talking about the EV adoption, and I came across this slide uh, on another website from Bloomberg Business, and it really, I, I kind of experienced this when I was watching the, the Model 3 launch, is that iPhone moment. You know, I think we can kind of remember where we were when Steve Jobs came up and, and brought out or announced the, the first iPhone. That really was a game changer, a game changer in the cell phone marketplace. Absolutely. It was a totally different device. And and a car is a car. However, just with the with the uptake and the excitement, and because it's an electric vehicle, I wouldn't say that the, that that event was a is a tsunami for um, the EV market. But I think it's the start of that whole movement. And there's a comparison to the, uh, 1955 um, to the Citroen DS, which um, did 80,000 sales or, I guess, potential sales or reservations at that point in time in 10 days. And here we're seeing the Tesla Model 3 do 232,000 in just two days. 
versus the original iPhone, which had an uptake of a little bit more of 270,000 in two days. Mm -hmm. So that's quite the, the significant um, moment that Tesla has. And in fact, uh, more data has shown that this has really been is the largest release of any product in history. Yeah, absolutely. If you if you look at it from a sales perspective, yeah. because an iPhone at $600 is not the same thing as a car at 35000 but if you take those numbers into account, it's the biggest product launch ever. Ever. I think so. Which is just phenomenal. So, yeah. you know, so I really feel that if we look back at this event 20 years from now, I think we'll see that this is really one of the major motivator and starting events for a, a radical change in the EV industry and marketplace as we move forward. Yeah, it's really a line in the sand. So if you were standing uh, in the mall uh, at a store and uh, waiting it, I mean, you were a part of history, I think. All right. Well, I think, right. you know, Elon did tweet. And you were. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, yeah. Elon did tweet that he was going to send out uh, a little gift or token of appreciation to people who That's stood right. in line. That's right. He underestimated how many people are going to do that. We haven't seen anything in the He's mail He's still yet, printing so. those gifts out as we speak. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now, you talked about the, the Q1 earning call, so let's start with some current news there, because that's very current as of yesterday. It oh, was, yes, absolutely. It was yeah. quite the, the eye-opening call, uh, specifically if we stay away from all the monetary stuff that was discussed, about sure. funding and all the, the analysts that were asking those information. But what we picked out is, as you mentioned earlier, is that acceleration of target dates and uh, and, and, and of a production amounts. And uh, they also announced that they, they're setting a kind of a hard... Uh, target date for the suppliers of July 1st of next year. Yes. Can you explain what that means? Okay. Um, just so everybody knows, uh, Tesla um, uh, operates a, a factory in Fremont, California. Yep. They got this uh, this factory for pennies on the dollar from Toyota back in to uh, 2010. Mm -hmm. um, and it back in the in, in, in its heyday, the vehicle uh, the 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 factory was able to produce 500,000 cars a year. Okay. So based on that, Tesla's always said that, yes, out of this factory, we can do 500,000 cars. Now, can't do it now today because Model S and Model X, I mean, right now they're projected to do between 80 and 90,000 cars right. this year. Exactly. Um, it was always a, a really good factor to be able to grow, to be able to meet, say, something like a, a mass market car's mm -hmm. demand. Mm -hmm. However, with four, with over 400,000 reservations now, they've they've had to scramble because they weren't anticipating this many vehicles. Exactly. So they've had to go back and scramble and try to figure out, well, what can we do to meet the demand? Mm -hmm. So um, as we found out yesterday with the first quarter uh, earnings call, um, that they've decided to move their plan from 2020 making 500,000 cars to yeah. 2018. So they bumped it up about two years. Wow. So all things being said, if you look at the Model 3 uh, program, it looks like it's been uh, pushed up by about six months. Mm -hmm. So now they're really accelerating everything internally. So they've also yeah. said, as you mentioned, with the July 1st, 2017 hard date. Now they've also said that it's an impossible date, but mm -hmm. based on production, because there's so many suppliers involved, that they have to set some kind of hard date in the sand mm -hmm. and say, look, you got to have everything in place so that we can start producing. So, yeah, there's some leeway involved and so on and so forth, but you have to have something to, to work against and work back from. Right. So I think that's where the date's really coming from. Um, we'll see. Um, they, they've said that they, they're not going to be able to meet that date, but they have to have something. Right, exactly. So having said that, um, if we look at... Uh, the, and I was going to add, by the way, that something is, for what they said on the call, is about six to 7,000 unique components that need to be available that's before right. they can really start production. Yes, the and they've said many times before mm -hmm. that Model 3 uh, is all new technology. The car was redesigned from the ground up mm -hmm. specifically to be mass manufactured. Right. So if you look at a Model X, uh, Model X or a Model S, especially Model X, mm -hmm. uh, very difficult cars to manufacture because they were designed, as Elon says, to just work, not to be mass manufactured. Okay. So when they started the Model 3 program, they had to start right. all over from scratch. New batteries, new cells, new literally everything had to be built from the ground up mm -hmm. with in mind, be able to reach a 500,000 production rate. Now, 500,000 is all cars combined, but say yep. 300,000. Yep. So that's really the point with the vehicle was yep. to, to be mass manufactured. Mm -hmm. So having said that, now this July dates come in, and now they really have to get all their suppliers lined up, all the parts lined up, and so on and so forth, so that they could potentially start uh, building, um, you know, early production vehicles come July. It, it, I right. think it would probably be closer to October. Right, right. Um, but they they've since revised that now and said that instead of being delivery starting at twenty at the end of twenty seven, they want to do volume deliveries. That's a big difference. Absolutely. So I think they're on track. Um, the other thing too, if if I may, yeah. Um, 
Tesla has had a bad history of not meeting their deadlines mm -hmm. with Model S and especially with Model yeah, they X. They get beat up by their shareholders all the they, time. Yeah, they do. And I, and I think that's, that's very, very fresh in their yeah. minds. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't want to repeat that mistake ever again because Absolutely, this is yeah. the most important vehicle to the company at this point. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, these, these lines that are drawn in the sand, these, these are hard dates that they mm -hmm. really have to hold to as best as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, we'll see how things go, but I have a very high confidence they're going to pull this off. Right. Um, and and these are the first there. steps for them to achieve their overall goal of about a million a million units by 2020. Yeah, if over time, you know, uh, being able to build up the factory. Um, mm -hmm. the a million units overall, not just a Model 3. Yes, right? exactly. You know. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And the Fremont factory may have to be probably expanded, but they've also said, too, that they may have to build another factory, just yeah. like most other car manufacturers. I've heard I've France is, is, is looking for them to come over. Yeah, well, they do have to establish a factory in Europe eventually yeah, and China, too, because mm -hmm. of the high import taxes involved with those countries. Yeah. It just doesn't make logistically sense to sell a car at those kind of values or Absolutely. in those countries when you have to make in California ship them over. So that's why, sure. you know, they have to build the cars there as well as a plan for building a factory in the U S yeah. um, to help out with demand on, on, yeah. on, on the North American side of things. And I think after the call or, or the same day, uh, they put a whole whack of, uh, not hiring, uh, you know, jobs. Uh, if you want yeah, they're holding a job fair, job fair. And yeah. For thousands of jobs. Yes. And I, so, I had mentioned, yeah, I think I mentioned on, on Twitter or something that, uh, I think before the earnings call, they had mentioned that, and that yeah. was the first indication that production plans have really accelerated now the, the hirings and so right. on and so forth. So, right. Yeah. And in fact, um, the design, as Elon said on the call is pretty well completed. So what, what we kind of mm -hmm. saw in the March three or in the March uh, model three launch yeah. is basically what we're going to get from a design perspective. Yeah. Um, even the, the, the drive train is a production drive train that was, yeah. uh, people, or, yeah. or their drivers were, were driving around it. Yeah. I think it's important to people to remember that um, Tesla basically has an edict in in internally that they don't do um, concept cars. Right. They always show uh, running prototypes. True. Um, you know, many other companies will do, you know, static displays and they look really cool. But yeah. when the final car comes out, it looks nothing like that. Exactly. Uh, Elon maybe hate, components from that. Yeah, probably, model, but, but Elon said uh, he hates that. Yeah. He absolutely hates the fact that you go to the show and you see this fancy car and then when it comes out, it no, doesn't look. So they've mm -hmm. always said, no, everything that we do is going to be, when we do the production car, it'll be better than the prototype. Right. Right. So now that this, the, the production schedule has been moved up approximately six months, that, yeah, the engineering on this thing, he said, has to be finished within six to eight weeks. So Absolutely. it's very accelerated. Tesla's working on a two to three year production uh, from prototype to production schedule. Yeah. And the rest of the industry works on about six years. So wow, these guys are moving very, very, very fast. Very accelerated. Yeah. And he even said, so, I mean, if, if, if you have not put a reservation in, and we're not tr trying to sell you on oh, this, no, by no. the way. We're here to provide information. But yeah. if you feel compelled to put a reservation in now, Elon said that even orders placed now will be delivered in 2018. So only two years. That's kind of what I was expecting my order yeah, to um, come in, maybe yeah. mid-2018. So maybe it'll be earlier. Is what you're yeah, saying. I might have to turn to my lease early. <laughs> might have to turn to your lease early, exactly. <laughs> now, also, I want to talk about a little about the battery because we've had a lot of, I mean, you've had a lot of inquiries on, on the forum side, and there's a lot of talk about the batteries. Yes, absolutely, There were yeah. some direct questions uh, yesterday on the call about the batteries, which they basically responded to say that it will be less than 75 kilowatt hours, but they would not say exactly what that is. Um, can you uh, elaborate a little bit more on that uh, on that battery? And I know we can talk a little bit more later on, but uh, what's your feeling on that? Um, in the earnings call, they did mention the less than 75 yeah. kilowatt hour. There was another Tesla official that uh, mentioned, I think it was early in the week or, or very late last week, mm -hmm. that it would be less than 60 kilowatt hour. We really don't know yet. Right. Um, Tesla is a secretive company, yeah. uh, much like Apple is. Exactly. Um, they like surprises, yeah. and uh, they don't reveal all their numbers and show all their cards until, like, Traditionally, in their second reveal, that's when they actually show the final production uh, right. vehicle, and right. then they pull the rabbits out of the hat and really. Which should that be way. sometime next year. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. not, not yeah. this year, but most. Likely no, no, next year. no, no. It's too early now. Yeah. They still have to finish uh, okay. production, uh, production engineering. Yeah. Uh, they have to tool yeah. up for the next, uh, say, yeah. nine to ten months. Yeah. So yes, we'll definitely see a, a, a reveal. Now it may happen a little earlier, given mm -hmm. that their production plans moved up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was expecting maybe September, October next year, but mm -hmm. now that this has moved up, we could, it could be spring. as early as summer. I don't know. Spring, summer. Okay. Yeah, somewhere in there. One thing I also found, I think this is our, our last little bit about the the earnings call yesterday, 
One thing I found really fascinating, um, maybe people out there are thinking that we're, we're Tesla fanboys and we're just really all about Tesla. Well, we're not. I mean, right. I, don't, I don't drive a Tesla today. <laughs> I, I drive a, we have a couple of Nissans. You don't have a Tesla today. No, I don't. Uh, but we do believe in the Model 3 and we both believe very, very much in the EV industry as a whole. And Tesla, they were able to back that up as far as the number of people uh, buying into the Model 3, yep. re reserving it with the fact that 93% of the reservation holders, this was their first interaction with Tesla. So, so I mean, in my case, I've, I've been through a store. I've seen it in a mall, looked at it, talked, but I have, haven't gone and done anything Have you more. driven one yet? Uh, actually, after I did the reservation, because I said, yeah, I'd like to do an online test, I'd like to do a test drive. I actually did do a that's model, an expensive, model S. That's an model expensive S. mistake to make. Exactly. It was a, it's a beautiful car. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. But yeah. the 93% uh, yeah. really had, this was their first interaction with Tesla versus 7% that were Tesla owners. And yeah. that's, that's an astounding fact. Yeah. I think it really speaks to the fact that Tesla, despite spending not even a dime on yeah. marketing, yeah, um, has really built themselves an aspirational brand mm -hmm. by building essentially what's considered to be the best car ever made uh, and really pushing the technology forward yeah. and everything that they've done. Um, that everybody really wanted one of these vehicles, but the right. cost of entry was just too high. But now yeah. we're at the point now where the vehicle is largely affordable to most medium income families. Exactly. Um, and of course, if you can get a rebate or some kind of tax incentive to, to reduce mm -hmm. that, that capital cost of the vehicle, mm -hmm. um, I mean, gee, I mean, it's great. You're not spending any more money on gasoline. Exactly. And we will, on our next episode, uh, just to jump ahead, we will talk about the EV8 structure, both for U.S. and Canada at that show, oh, yeah. because it's very important. I mean, I know for me as a decision, that's a very crucial part of yeah. my decision making. So, uh, so great job on Tesla. Um, one thing we I also wanted to talk about is Motor Trend uh, got the exclusivity to go to the Gigabit factory back in, in late April and to spend a couple hours driving around or having or following somebody driving a Model 3, which was quite the exclusive. Yeah. They spent a couple hours taking different pics and videos, and we've got some of that video running behind us there and some of the pics. Um, they were not allowed interior shots or no. to get into the car, but they were definitely allowed to walk around and ask questions. Uh, what's your, did you have a, you, you watch that video? Oh yeah, absolutely. What was your take on that? Uh, yeah. It's a beautiful car. Every yeah, time I see absolutely. it, it just looks so much better and better. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know for some that the front end is a bit of a growing yeah. thing for a lot of people, <laughs> and I think you really have to really think back on it. Yeah. An EV doesn't need a radiator, so there's no exactly. need for a grill on there. We've just become so accustomed to seeing grills that's that a right. uh, front end like that. But I think the the front end of those types of vehicles now that's you know was first introduced on the Model X, and yeah. I had predicted many times before that it would make its way to Model S, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and of course it was going to be on the Model Three. That it's it's about aerodynamics. Um, Absolutely. The, the Model S, for example, has just been increased to almost 300 uh, miles of range just because because of the new, you know, the new front end. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so it's all, it's about aerodynamics. But despite that, yeah, the car is gorgeous. I, if, they, if, if, if anything Tesla really knows how to do is greenhouses. The, the, the glass on their, yeah. oh man. I mean, now, even though I understand there may be an optional non-glass roof. Uh, yeah, well, what they showed, the I think what they that, showed right? at the prototypes <laughs> was really kind of like, the aspirational, what we'd really like the car to be mm -hmm. if it was fully well equipped right. and so on and so forth. But one of the engineers um, had mentioned that there will be an option for a panoramic roof. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't be too big because mm -hmm. the crossbeam members are only about this far That's apart, right. yeah. um, as well as a metal roof. So I would suspect mm -hmm. metal will be default, panoramic will be an option, all glass will be another option. Cool. Something right. along those lines. One but of the yeah. things that uh, you've got some emails about and some inquiries about is about a HUD concept or a heads-up display. Yeah. A lot of people were a little bit uh, maybe turned off, I guess, by the interior shots that they showed of the Model 3. Uh, and just certainly during the driving, uh, after the launch, uh, a lot of videos that came out for people driving around, that really the only display was that 15-inch um, landscape-oriented display and no central um, a speedometer like we're used to in most cars. So yeah. people are, are working, uh, uh, guessing, I guess, that, hey, is a HUD coming because they've hired some people or a guy that, that does this kind of work? What's your, what's your take on that? Um, I think it was bound to happen mm -hmm. um, as if I remember correctly about three years ago the first time I'd ever heard about Tesla um, talking about the interior of the vehicle they'd yeah. mentioned that they there was a possibility they may go down to one screen instead of the two that's traditional on the right. S and the X right. um, obviously that's exactly what's happened they've mm -hmm. interestingly they've gone to a landscape mode rather than the portrait mode yeah. which is quite smart because they've they've decided that they really wanted the interactivity of this 
of this uh, screen to be accessible to both the driver and the passenger. Yeah, which is and I think that really speaks to more stuff that's going to happen in the future because mm -hmm. Tesla is hell-bent on autonomy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that stuff will really come into play. Um, everybody was asking, well, where's the speedometer? Where's the speedometer? Because traditionally it's in the binnacle, which is, you know, right. kind of the, s the spot in the front where you have your gauges. I didn't see it. So yeah, it definitely wasn't there. It, it was, but they put yeah. it, it's a digital, yes. it's, it was up in the top left hand corner of the on screen, display, of course, yes, being, exactly. being software based, they can mm -hmm. move it wherever they want. Yeah. And they did um, say that the GUI in that was just first, first. Pass, yeah. It's not so finished. It yeah. It's in, not finished so. yet. The, the, uh -huh. the hardware engineering of the vehicle might yeah. be finished in about two months, but the software, right. they still got another year and a half to finish that. So right. I'm not worried about right. that. You know, and you mentioned a good word software because really Tesla is in, in all honesty is, is half software and half hardware you know for if you yeah they're way. I, they the way I look at them they, they're a software company that happens yeah. to make cars exactly. <laughs> um, exactly well actually it's more of a battery yeah. company yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah there's a lot of facts in there but mm -hmm. to go back on the HUD because we yeah. want to finish this um, there, there were a couple of recent hires that Tesla did. They hired one of the engineers from the uh, Porsche Mission E interior right. team. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to be working on some stuff internally at, at mm -hmm. Tesla. And they did another hire, a uh, fellow who uh, was responsible for the Scully motorcycle right. helmet. That's right. Yeah. And, of course, the conjecture on the Internet is, like, oh, the Model uh, Model 3 doesn't have any kind of uh, you know gauges on the front. Now they're going to put a HUD in it. Mm -hmm. But, of course, Elon just said that engineering has to be finished within six to eight weeks. There's not enough time. So my feeling is... Right now, and I could be wrong. <laughs> Things change. Exactly. Uh, anything with Tesla, if you were We're watching not profits, them. we don't know it all. Yeah, either, yeah, so. yeah. The interiors on Teslas <laughs> yeah. do traditionally change a lot between prototypes and production vehicles. Right. But this car, there's just not enough time. Not enough time. So yes. if they do anything, we'll see. I don't think it'll be right now. The recent hires, and they have to finish it. It mm -hmm. may be in a future version of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. We'll have to wait and see. It would be nice, but I don't think it's critical at this point. Mm -hmm. We'll mm -hmm. see. We'll see how it plays out. We will see. But I agree with you. I think because of the accelerator timeline, they just don't have a, enough time to really add a lot more. As you said, you know, what they've done with the Model X in, in kind of adding all these features as they went what, what caused part of the delays. Oh, the Model so X was they just... don't want to repeat yeah, that. Yeah, that was a nightmare. And they can't. <laughs> now, I just want to finish up on the battery. So we did touch upon that we, we yeah. you know, that Tesla said it's going to be less than 75 uh, kilowatt hours. We're guesstimating 60 or maybe 55-ish, but based on no. kind of... Well, Just like I said, we have two right? we have two uh, comments from Tesla. One said yeah. less than sixty, and the other said uh, less than seventy five. So, right. my guess, if I was to take an educated guess, it would probably be anywhere about fifty five with an optional battery, maybe about seventy five okay. on the higher end battery. Yeah. Uh, being a smaller car, a lighter car, better aerodynamics, mm -hmm. uh, it would be very very easy for them to be able to get. And now they they have stated that the minimum vehicle size. Uh, of the battery will get 215 miles, 320 kilometers. Yep. Um, I, it wouldn't surprise me at all with the bigger battery pack to exceed uh, 270 miles, uh, 500 mm -hmm. kilometers quite easily. And you brought some props with you, which is great. So yeah, for those my, who my don't infamous know, battery. Uh, this is what's in the Tesla uh, car. And yeah. in the S, there's 7,000 104. 7,104 yeah. of these all linked together. These Panasonic. Now they're sticking with Panasonic, continuing on. Correct. Until yeah. they start building their, until the Gigafactory or uh, Panasonic is a partner in the Gigafactory, okay, so, so they are the still the primary manufacturer. Mm -hmm. The 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 factory is yeah. run by Tesla, yeah. but the batteries internally are made by by Panasonic. Okay. It's all part of the cost reduction mm -hmm. uh, to build them on U.S. soil. Right. Uh, to build the battery cells for Model Three, which mm -hmm. won't be exactly an eighteen six fifty. We've mm -hmm. seen from. A little uh, from bigger, right? Yeah, it'll be a little bit bigger. They both mentioned uh, JB and uh, Elon said that it'd be about ten percent larger from this. Okay. I did notice in one of my videos that I posted on YouTube yep. from the Model Three introduction that I was able to study the cells are actually quite a bit larger. Okay. So if you could build a larger cell with more capacity, build it on U.S. soil, get rid of the NAFTA thing, you mm -hmm. can get some very good cost savings, and that's mm -hmm. the whole point mm -hmm. of the of the plan. And the other thing, since we're on the topic of battery, that you and I were discussing offline before we started the show is is the, the, the thermal aspect that Tesla has in their pads and the way that they, they uh, manage their batteries is totally different than everybody else. And I know that there's been problems, you know, we hear about cars that are driven in cold weather that they lose, you know, 20, 30, 40% of their capacity. So, you know, the claimed ranges aren't, aren't, aren't there when in real life. Um, how does Tesla do it with their batteries? Um, well, Tesla does have a liquid-cooled thermal management right. system, mm -hmm. so their battery modules, they have pipes that, that run through mm -hmm. them, and they yep. run a glycol, much like a radiator would. Yeah. Um, they done... try to keep it at an optimum temperature. Like yes, constant, well, yes. Right? Lithium-ion batteries uh -huh. need to run at an optimum temperature. Mm -hmm. um, if they're any colder... Um, they can't deliver the same amount of energy all at the same right. time, which results in a reduced range. range. Now, once right. the t once the batteries come back up to temperature, you get that energy back. Okay. It's just it's more 
accentuated in hotter or colder climates, mm. uh, much more so in the colder climates. Uh, say the Nissan Leaf, for example, doesn't right. have any thermal management, uh, and they've right. suffered quite a bit in you know, exactly. places like Arizona. Um, and the, in cold weather as well. I well, they all do in cold right. weather, right. and mm -hmm. it's it's important to be able to have some kind of thermal management system. Mm -hmm. So other ones... You they know, have a heater or something like cold. Yeah. yeah, well, they can do a passive. Right. Uh, like Tesla has an active thermal mm -hmm. management system. Other ones have a passive. Right. Uh, it, it all depends. I think um, like Nissan, the next vehicle, will surely fix this problem. Absolutely. Uh, BMW has, has a, um, a thermal management system. Yes. It's heaters in the i3. Right. Uh, the Volt in their prismatic cells, which are the pouch-type cells. Mm -hmm. They have plates, mm -hmm. and they run, you know, coolant through those oh, and okay. stuff. So that's okay. yeah. They all understand that that these batteries need to be right. thermally managed. Uh, Tesla is the only one so far that's using a cylindrical right. format, oh. but I think um, more companies are coming on board and realizing, like Faraday Future, right. um, uh, Audi's e-tron, mm -hmm. the, the Porsche Mission E, those type of things. I think mm -hmm. they're all going to be adopting. Um, the cylindrical format with this, um, whether it comes from Panasonic or Bosch or any other company, right. uh, it's just proven that Tesla seems to have done it right the first time with this with the cylindrical format. And also in their packaging, I mean, you, you mentioned to me earlier, you know, this whole skateboard effect that people are trying to go after. Oh yes, now, everybody's you know, adopting in, it in a way that uh, maybe you can explain what you mean by that. Well, the skateboard platform, if if people don't know that what what Tesla's really done is that they've they've realized that in order to make a long range vehicle, that you really have to get as much battery pack. Yep. in the car so if you really strip away everything but the vehicle and you put four corners four wheels in the corners what's mm -hmm. left well if you build a platform and make it all battery yep. miniaturize your components as far as the as the motors are concerned put it between the wheels mm -hmm. gives you lots of what franz von holzhausen says it's lots of opportunity space yeah so uh, the rest of the industry right now that are making ostensibly compliance cars they're just mm -hmm. taking existing vehicles shoving batteries where they can fit right but so you, see, you hear about these t-frame t yeah like in the volt it's like it's that. like you got it down the tunnel yeah. It's a mm -hmm. T. Yeah, um, yeah. um, the Leaf has a battery underneath as well, but yeah. the packaging is a little different, so you don't yeah. get as much Maybe range. The Kia, the, the rear seat's elevated a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Slightly, so you so. have to make some room. Yeah. There's there's mm -hmm. compromises in vehicle design, yeah. no matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think most of the higher end car companies like uh, like Porsche and um, and Audi and some mm -hmm. of the others now have realized that the skateboard type design actually makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and Tesla's not the only one. It wasn't actually the first company to do that. GM had done something like this back in about 2003, the 2004. Mm -hmm. No, not the yeah. EV1. It was another product. And, I, and it escapes me right mm -hmm. now. Maybe we can put a picture up when I find it. When we find it, yeah. yeah. Uh, they built something on okay. that type of idea, okay. but it never really went anywhere. So they really took that to heart and then built their car on that, which if looking back on it now retrospectively is actually the right way of doing yeah. it in order to get the range. So I, more and more companies are going to adopt this type of format because it makes sense. And we did hear uh, just a few days ago that they will offer ludicrous mode. Maybe you can explain what that is. Ah, uh, ludicrous mode. Everybody talks about <laughs> ludicrous mode. Everybody talks <laughs> about it. Just yeah. search ludicrous <laughs> yeah. on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Um, okay, well. It's pretty fast. That's all it, that Yeah, it's super fast. Uh, yeah. Well, what ludicrous mode is, is it's a software setting on the dash, but really what it is, it's a combination of software and some hardware changes mm -hmm. from the battery. Um, a, a normal, uh, say a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack mm -hmm. in a Model S can draw, without the ludicrous mode, about 1300 amps out of the battery. Okay. Uh, so what Tesla did is that they changed it, they changed the contactors on the ludicrous, mm -hmm. the cars are equipped with ludicrous have Inconel, which is a, a space age um, steel that mm. they use in rockets, of course mm. with SpaceX. There you go. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, so the, those high-end contactors, along with some special um, smart fuses inside, mm -hmm. the um, in, inside the battery pack, they can draw up to 1500 amps out of the battery now mm -hmm. from the standard 1300. And a very short pull, basically. Right? Oh, it's so just draw, basically yeah. just suck it all yeah. out of the battery all at once. Yeah. Of course, these yeah. cars are also, um, are also equipped with dual inverters. Mm -hmm. So the, the the bottom line is that we got a, a you know a forty seven hundred pound family sedan that can go zero to sixty in like two point eight seconds. Exactly, and they're they're talking about the Model Three with that mode, probably doing under four seconds, something like oh, that. Oh yeah, or maybe easily. Maybe Those maybe numbers are not known yet, but right. they have stated that the base vehicle will do zero to sixty in less than six, six. seconds. So yep. anything equipped with performance or ludicrous, yeah, sub four wouldn't surprise me. Excellent. <laughs> and now you you touched upon it earlier about when we talk about battery and battery range, so. You know, they claimed range is 215 miles minimum. That Tesla's Minimum to, EPA. EPA yes. that they're going to yeah. get out of this. And this is something that they're saying is going to be real world, not just for the sticker that goes on the car when yeah. you're shopping, but actual real world mileage. Yeah. Part of that has to do with the, the aerodynamics. And, you know, they're getting a 0.21 coefficient, um, which really gives them that with, you know, the, the sub, the, the battery, that's the optimum weight for, for that size of vehicle, gives them those those type of uh, ranges, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's important to note that the, the minimum range is um, 
is based on you know not driving down the hill with a tailwind and right. the air and the AC turned off. Exactly. It has to be real miles that you can really count on. Now they yeah. have said that these are going to be minimum. They hope to exceed it. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Tesla speak, that probably means another extra 15 miles out of the base battery. So Absolutely. we'll see. Absolutely. Well, that's what uh, <laughs> we got so far from Tesla news uh, from the Q1 uh, earnings call and then some of the other uh, facts that we've, we've gone out and some of the questions that you've been asked in the forum. Um, I want to talk just quickly a little bit about electrical vehicle uh, adoption um, from a worldwide perspective, just so people are aware that this isn't just a fad that oh, a few people are jumping into, that this really is a worldwide, not just phenomenon, but it's a reality. We, we, we know that, you know, there's issues with greenhouse gases. We know that there's climate change. We know that these are facts, a lot of science behind it, and that we do need to look at other ways of sustainable transportation and sustainable energy uh, to get for that. So um, a couple of slides that I have up here, um, like the, these numbers are a little bit old, they're 2012, but just to, to talk about that there's 38% um, adoption already from, from uh, electric vehicles worldwide that uh, the U.S. Uh, has achieved, but the leaders are certainly the Scandinavian countries. When yeah. you look at Norway as an example on a per capita, they are right up there. Uh, they've Top given the some great tax advantages and they've put in infrastructure and they've said, we've got to lower everything by whatever their target dates are, I forget what they are. Um, so, you know, even China, Japan, I mean, Japan's been, been leading that for a while. Um, how do you, you know, can, Canada, we're catching up, right? We're slowly catching yeah, up. Yeah, we're, we're playing a little <laughs> bit of catch up. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, uh, there have been revamps on, on the three provinces, and we'll talk about this maybe in the next yeah, podcast so about the EV detail. incentives and yep. stuff. So we're finally realizing um, with the new government in place that some things need to be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Europe, for example, I mean, there's legislation now starting in Netherlands and some of these other um, countries now where... Um, gasoline cars will just not be allowed into the into city Correct. centers anymore. Yeah. So now you need to have some yeah. kind of London charges the, t the extra tax. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know this is this is happening. Uh, mm -hmm. China is a, a huge opportunity because of the pollution situation Absolutely. over there, and that's why yeah. we're seeing things like the bio defense mode on the on the Model S and X. We'll talk about that another time. Yeah, we'll talk about that <laughs> later. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's it's really happening. There are some companies that are doing compliance, which is yeah. just enough to meet, say, California law to sell. Right. But but other companies are taking much more to heart. Things like, uh, like uh, Nissan with the with with mm -hmm. the Leaf, and now GM coming on on board with the Bolt. These are these are good signs. If these companies uh, continue on the way that they are, uh, we will yeah. see more and more adoption. Yeah. It's going to take some time, but it's coming. And just a few years ago, as I mentioned, these are 2012 numbers, but there were over 180,000 electrical vehicles, electric vehicles, uh, really that were passenger cars on the road. And I'm sure that number is probably well over a quarter million at this point, since we're talking about four years from now. Um, that still relates to about less than 1% of the entire automobile market. Oh, yes, market. It's, 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 it's very small. But it has a snowball effect because mm -hmm. once you get some compelling cars on the market, um, then people start paying much more attention. It's, it's, a, it's an education plan, right? It, people have yeah. to, they, they have to change their mindset about vehicles. Yeah. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's a fait accompli. It, it's really going to happen. It's just Tesla's pushing the needle, uh, you know, the whole edict really is to yeah. accelerate the transition to sustainable transport. We've yeah. heard it so many times, yeah. but it's not about necessarily making cars for the sake of making cars. It's mm -hmm. about pushing the needle and really showing the rest of the world that if you do it properly, here's what you get as an end result. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, enable to support all these vehicles that are out there, um, and I'll change the subject a little bit, is uh, you need to have a charging mechanism, an infrastructure in place for that. Mm -hmm. And just for an FYI, I guess charging for beginners, because I only recently learned this only a couple yeah. months ago as I started to investigate more, um, there are, are what they call EVSCs, which are electrical vehicle supply equipment, or we call them chargers. Yeah. Uh, the reality is that the chargers are actually built into the cars, and these are just ways to plug into it for most of the other EVs that are out there, right? I know that Nissan, again, they have, you know, they came up with a 3.3, and then they went to a 7.2 or, or a 6 built-in charger, so the charger is actually in the car, but... Yeah. People use that terminology because it's easy for us to think yeah, about. Yeah, um, yeah. Tesla builds the chargers um, in the, the vehicle. So literally, yeah. if you can find a plug, you can plug it in the car, we'll accept it. Yeah. Some are better than others, obviously. Yeah. Um, some of the other kind of manufacturers rely on a level 2 charger. You have to plug in its proprietary, whatever the case right. may be. Right. But it's slow. I, I think more and more of the manufacturers are realizing you have to build the, the charger into the vehicle if yeah. you're going to make it mass adoption. Right. So, so, you, so you can find a, yeah. a charger anywhere. And there are two kinds of chargers, really kind of like a slow charging which is really the most common and cost effective then you have your fast charging or you may have heard the term 
out there DC fast charging. Um, and really the, the difference is uh, on a level two, it uses a 240 volt system. So really right. kind of like your dryer plug in your house. That's the whole point, yeah. That, that type of plug. Yeah. And uh, from our understanding, for most of the units that are out there, they can charge uh, a, a car that's depleted from 0% uh, in about four to six hours to full charge, maybe eight hours. Most of them recommend an overnight type of situation with a level two. The level one, I guess, is just your standard three-prong 110, which... Yeah, if you're sucker for punishment. <laughs> that's a really slow one, yeah, so we're yeah, not really talking yeah, about that, but yeah. the, they kind of come with cars in most cases anyway. Yeah, yeah, the, the most of the cars can plug into level one, but yep. the, because of the size of the batteries, it's just not practical. It's, not practical. it's just there, it, you yep. know, the, look, mm -hmm. the electrical grid exists. Yep. You can plug it in, you can use it, but what, what, what most people really want is level two, which is yep. a 240 volt, call it a dryer or stove socket mm -hmm. type of thing in yep. your garage. Your mentality is uh, with a, an electric vehicle, it's just like your cell phone. You use it all day. You go home, you plug it in, you get up in the morning, you have a full charge. Right. So it doesn't matter really how long it takes to charge at night. So yeah. for the times and when you do need a fast charge, let's say you're going on a long distance. Mm -hmm. Tesla has their superchargers. We'll talk about that. Yeah. It's called level three, and it's mm -hmm. DC to DC. There's no conversion between AC that comes out okay. of the wall for DC to the battery. It goes right. straight into so the battery, battery pack. battery battery, basically. Yeah, exactly. Right so that's yeah. a level mm -hmm. three. requires higher voltage, higher amperage, yeah. so on and so forth. It's not typically something you ever find in the home. Right. Most people, level two is really what you need at home. And they're fine. very expensive. So oh, yeah. You're not <laughs> really going to have these. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a power wall. Who knows? So that's <laughs> another that's, that's that's another show. A different show. Yeah. But certainly, yeah, the level threes, the the known as uh, direct current fast chargers, and they use a four hundred eighty volt system, uh, and they so you hear a lot about people charging eighty percent in about thirty minutes. So yeah. that's kind of your fast charge. And yeah. as you said, you know, if you're out and about, and or even for traveling, uh, that eighty percent on a three hundred and some odd kilometer range will get you a lot of range. So you can go in, have a coffee, have a lunch, and come out in your car is, is almost fully charged. Uh, yeah, I, th I think the rate of charge is something that you have to kind of get used to yeah. because some will say 80% in 30 minutes or one hour or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Uh, Tesla likes to say if you use their superchargers, which is you know their, their network of high-speed DC to DC chargers, yeah. is that you can get a, a, a half full battery as, low as, as little as about 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, what happens with the lithium ion batteries is that when you charge them, um, the, the way I explain it to people is says, imagine you've got a glass of water. If you fill up that water, and you can fill it up pretty quickly, but when you get close to the top, boy, you have to back off because right. it's going to overflow. Mm -hmm. So okay. batteries are essentially the same way. You can charge them fairly quickly up to 75, 80%, but then you have to taper off. And that's called balancing of the battery, oh, okay. right? Yep. So in the Tesla, of course, when you have you know over 7,000 of these lithium cells, mm -hmm. um, that last 20% to 100% is the part that takes the longest. Mm -hmm. So that's why in the same, most people, when they go long distance, you can charge pretty quickly up to 80% and get on your way. The 100% can be done. It's called a range charge, and you can really crank it up if you really have to go and you're not too sure where you're going to plug in. Right, but right. it's not recommended you go to 100% all the time because it, that deplete, it, it, it affects the, the longevity of the battery a long time. So okay. most people... We'll go, you know, usually charge to 80 or 90%. Mm -hmm. It's per perfectly yeah. safe to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And one thing I've heard the term is you have really uh, the gas station in your garage. Because with yeah, electric vehicles, you're filling up. If you want to fill up every night, you're filling up. So when you get into your vehicle in the morning and drive away, you've got a full tank. Of yeah, charge. that's the mentality. Because yeah. your mentality with a gas car is that you fill up your tank, you drive around till it's almost empty, then you go fill it up again. But that's not the way you work. Or with your rush EV. when gas is cheap, but that's not yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, yeah. but with an EV, it's it's more like you you, you drive around for your daily use. Yeah. You, you do the occasional long distance drive. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, it's like your cell phone. You go in, you go yeah. to bed, you plug it in, get up in the morning, it's fully charged, yeah, off you go. go. So that's the mentality. Exactly. So the, this whole idea of well, gee, I I, I maybe maybe I, you know everywhere I go, I got to charge. That's that's yeah. not really the you know the reality and that's where you get that range anxiety you've heard that term. oh yeah the old boogeyman over over under the bed boogeyman. and really to combat that and we're going to loop this in from a canadian perspective uh, i just wanted to throw this out there uh, recently the ontario government as an example um, launched a 20 million dollar grant program uh, this year to increase uh, evsc chargers across the province yeah. and uh, so they put this bucket of money and there was all kinds of people that and organizations that responded including um, you know, businesses, private uh, and public uh, sector partners, and uh, they they announced that they're going, they awarded that twenty million dollars to build nearly five hundred EV charging stations um, over about two hundred fifty locations in Ontario through twenty seven partners. Um, so that really is going to give about, from my understanding, two hundred and eighty level two chargers, yep. and two hundred and thirteen 
level three charters throughout the province. Um, some of the partners are municipal governments. I know my local town where I live, um, they're going to get about four, uh, I think, level two chargers throughout the town in facilities. And also retail, such as Tim Hortons and McDonald's. And we're not plugging them. We're just saying that some of these, uh, and there are already a couple Tim's. At it's smart. Tim they need to put them where the people are. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's what happens in the States is where you see uh, Ikea, as an example. Yeah. The Depot. level three is more important, though, if you want right. to do long distance. So they need to yeah. be along the long, you know, sort of the, the long distance traveled, uh, say, highways, 400 series highways, that type yeah. of thing. Yep. Yeah. Now, Tesla has overcome that, though, with their cars, with their, you, you talked earlier about their superchargers. Yeah, the superchargers. Yeah. So, I mean, they claim it to be the world's fastest charging station, and they have superchargers um, all across North America, and in fact, the world. And, and today, if you go to their website and look at their supercharger maps, uh, they have about 600, and 600 plus supercharger stations with... Uh, using about 3,700 superchargers today. Yeah. Um, just in this year alone, they're going to expand that to uh, to well over um, 6,500 or 6,800 uh, stations. And then by 2017, Elon in the in the Model 3 announcement said that we're going to have 7,200 superchargers with over 15,000 destination chargers. And I wasn't aware of what a destination charger is. Maybe you can tell folks what that is. Well, Tesla has a program called Destination Chargers. And if you see, maybe we'll put up a picture, is yeah. that they have um, um, what they call the high-powered wall connector, mm -hmm. which is their level two but charger. That silver box? Yeah, yeah. That, you can put, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. You can put that in your garage yep. and you can feed that with a 40 amp or 80 amp. Okay. So businesses, say like a restaurant or a hotel or whatever, can get in on a destination program. And mm -hmm. essentially, my understanding is that uh, if they want to put these in to attract customers into their businesses, yeah. they can call Tesla and Tesla will say, you can be part of the program, just get us a quote and so on and so forth. And Tesla yeah. will, will fit will foot most of the bill for the installation and, and the wow. deployment of the systems. That's a good deal. So for many businesses, it's zero cost to them. So it's a it's a it's a great program I think for for te for Tesla owners. Yeah. And as you can see by the map that we put up, uh, or you can go to the Tesla website. I mean the uh, the the uptake in their the supercharger deployment is going to be all along you know major routes. Um, I, I I looked at the the background map that flashed up when Elon you know talked about the future, and I saw along along the Trans Canada yeah. Highway a lot more of these supercharger stations put up. So, yeah, they which, need to flesh out more of the East Coast. Is, I've got some exactly. family in Nova Scotia. I'd like yeah. to be able to go out there. And I'd like to go out west, so <laughs> maybe there's a balance we can have. Yeah. Because it, wouldn't it be nice to be able to drive electric across Canada? And it's back? great. We can go yeah. to our condo in Florida now there for free. Go. It's awesome. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they're doing something uh, something well. Um, any other thoughts you wanted to add before we wrap up? No, I think up? we've covered enough today. I think we'll yeah. we'll leave it for the next podcast. We've got quite a bit more stuff to cover. I mean, there's just never ending with the news as far as things are changing all the time. Um, I think I think if I, if I leave anything in the parting comments, I think we're seeing more change in the auto industry in the last five years than we've seen in 50 years. Absolutely. It's, it's changing so fast now. Absolutely. The influx of EVs, uh, the the self-driving technology, yeah. the computer technology is coming into the vehicles now. It's it's truly yeah. amazing. It's a fascinating market. I'm in the computer business, so this stuff too. really propel, really turns myself my propeller. Too. And I always hear the term <laughs> paradigm shift. We've had oh, a paradigm yeah. shift again. Yeah, it's happening uh, in that, but uh, it, which is just fascinating. It really is something, you know. And as we said, for future shows, we'll we'll. Uh, endeavor to come up with more content uh, of course following and tracking what's happening with the Model 3 because that's really the main purpose of the show but also to expand the scope on the EV industry again bring more Canadian content into that and that answer questions now if anybody has questions they want to send us how can they do that well we have an email address set up uh, it's podcast at model3ownersclub.com you can certainly send us there too uh, you can also submit anything on our Twitter feed at model3ownersclub um, or sorry, Model 3 Owners. Um, and you can also visit our forum at model3ownersclub.com. Uh, That's it. Great. Well, hey, we had our first show. It's it awesome. wasn't too painful, was no, it? No, no, not too bad. I think yeah. we'll get more into the swing of things as Absolutely. things go and stuff. But I, I really hope at the end of the day that it's helped people really sort of, you know, get more into the program and yep. see what's really going on and stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, yeah, do your due diligence. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there. We're trying to funnel just a small amount of that information through us. Hopefully it's beneficial. And uh, until next time, thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Great. Take Thanks care. for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.